Well, as people continue to log in, we are going to jump in because we have a lot, uh, a lot to cover. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share uh, <clears throat> my screen with you guys just uh, for a bit. Um, today, we're gonna, we're gonna talk, um, we're gonna talk about where the market is. It has been a very interesting market over, over the last probably 30 days. Um, more interesting than March and April and May and June, perhaps all put together. So um, let's take a look at what's going on. We're going to look at a few of our markets in general, and then we're going to look, um, look at the market as a whole. I think it's important right now for us to understand where, where the real estate market is outside of our bubble of, of either Portland or, or Eugene or, 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 or Southern Oregon, or right? W understanding as a whole what people are seeing, what they're experiencing as they show up to Portland, um, is is actually really or or show up to Oregon is a very interesting conversation. Um, so so let's jump in. Where are we? Uh, we'll look at Portland first, um, guys. It's been a decade, a decade, which means most of us have never seen anything quite like we are seeing with our inventory levels. Uh, July hit a, a new low for inventory at 1.2 months of total inventory. Um, I don't know that I remember seeing anything quite like that ever, to be honest. So definitely a, definitely a, um, a, a low of, of inventory. As we look at, as we look at that, uh, at the market in Portland, we saw a 6.8% increase in new listings um, last month over the year before, but, but we saw a 22% increase in pendings uh, over last year. So our months of inventory is almost half of what it was just a year ago. And we're definitely feeling that, right? We're feeling that as buyer's agents um, writing uh, offer after offer after offer after offer. We're feeling that as listing agents um, fielding multiple offers uh, has a completely new meaning right now. Uh, what I've begun to see is just some really great messaging going out from us as agents um, to our to our past buyers potentially that uh, that might be looking for an opportunity to sell at the right time. If there was ever a good time to sell, the message must be clear that uh, today is it. Now be careful. Um, I saw some agents, not ours, but I saw some agents posting some guarantees yesterday on Facebook, uh, guaranteeing sellers multiple offers, and we don't want to do that. Um, but it almost feels that way. Uh, you launch a listing, it feels like you're going to get multiple offers. Let's continue uh, and just go uh, south a little bit. You'll see um, Lane County, uh, look at your inventory, less than a month of inventory. Um, and again, as we look at, you know, pendings um, year over year, month over month, we're just not nearly taking enough listings to keep up with our, our pending sales. So again, um, same message there in Lane County. And then we go down to Salem in Southern Oregon. Salem, a 50% increase in new listings and a 65% increase in new pendings. Um, just uh, Southern Oregon, 1,093 new listings, 1,185 new pendings. Um, it just that the message out there must be that inventory is driving all conversations. Uh, how we prepare our buyers, how we how we get our sellers um, to get on the market. A lot of us had have had um, clients that maybe we we went to that listing presentation. They weren't quite ready. They're doing some projects, and and interestingly enough, that the message may be um, get on before those projects get done. To be quite honest, because we have an interesting window of opportunity and a gap to fill, a gap to fill within our industry. So. Um, I just wanted to share those numbers more locally. We'll get these stats out obviously by email, but now let's have a conversation about where the market is big picture. Uh, CoreLogic um, puts out the home pricing index, right, every single month. And we're always a couple of months behind as we look at the national numbers. But I think it's important for us to understand these national numbers. They came out from June. Uh, they also do a, a fairly decent job at forecasting where values will be a month from today, two months from today, a year from today. Historically, they've been great at their forecasting, CoreLogic has, because they look at so many data points. So let's look at um, sort of the backward um, maybe the rear view mirror of where the market is. And then we're gonna look at the, the windshield numbers as well. 
but uh, home prices nationwide, um, and this includes distressed sales, which we're going to talk about in just a minute, increased um, year over year about about 5%, 4.9% in June 2020. So we saw about a 5% increase in value year over year. Now, now we just looked briefly at those Portland Metro numbers and they were up 7%, uh, Southern Oregon, Lane County up five, 6%. So we're trending um, higher than those national numbers. But interestingly enough, we always catch up, right? We always catch up. So uh, here's what here's the interesting statistic. So increase year over year about 4.9% in June um, compared to June 2019, and increase month over month by about 1% um, June compared to May. So uh, increasing faster right now than we have historically over the last 12 months, and that has everything to do with inventory and interest rates, right? Inventory and interest rates. Now the forecast. The CoreLogic Home Price Index forecast numbers are there on the right-hand part of your screen, and um, you know they 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 forecast that prices will increase on a month-over-month -month basis by about 0.1 percent come July, right? 0.1 percent come July, and decrease one percent year over year based on June 2020 to June 2021. What's interesting is that's actually a, a, a decrease in their expected decrease. We're, we're, we'll talk about what they were expecting prior to last month in just a minute. Um, here's the Case-Shiller uh, trend and the home price index all on one graph, right? We see that the expectation, and this is up to date as well as moving forward into the next year, um, the expectation is we will begin to see a decrease in the increase in, in in pricing. Now, in order for that to happen, we're going to have to see more inventory. We're going to have to see more inventory or see interest rates go up a little bit. Or the expectation as well, and they look at that, is that we've borrowed our buyer inventory from the future. And some of us feel that way. Uh, some of us have experienced that uh, across our network in, in the state of Oregon, where the buyer pool or new buyer pool has dropped just slightly because so many have already purchased. So the, the pricing trend for both by Case Shiller and by CoreLogic is that we're going to slowly see this decline and increase in, in value. Um, and potentially a year from today be at a, a decrease year over year. Um, finally, in, in, in June 2020, being at a, a lower increase in value than, than June 20, uh, in, rather in 2021 over 2020. But here's what's so interesting. Um, initially, <clears throat> back in, in March and in April and in May, um, CoreLogic expected a one year price decline of about 6.6%. They thought, they, they had actually forecasted that in May 2021, we'd see about a 6% decline in, in home price. Well, they pulled that back considerably and they say, well, by June 2021, we, we still believe we'll see a decline in value, but that decline in value will be about 1%. Right, one percent. So these are good numbers to, to share with our our sellers. They're good numbers also to sh to share with our buyers that might feel like, well, gosh, the, the market is is sort of reminding us of the last time we saw this crazy run up and and then this drop off. Even a year out right now, um, Core Lodge is ex is expecting well maybe values will drop one percent um, year over year from June to June. So interesting numbers to share with our our sellers. The other conversation that I think is important to have, guys, is just understanding where delinquency rates are um, and, and how they affect, affect overall values. There's a lot of talk about this um, with uh, mortgages um, going into uh, just delinquency. So let's talk about, um, this is the current to 30-day transition rate. What does that mean? That means mortgages that were current, but they've then transitioned in what we call um, uh, just, just barely delinquent, right? What's called early stage delinquency. That means they're either 30 to 59 days behind in their, their, their mortgage. They missed one payment, in other words, or, or by missed, they didn't make one payment. So in May, 7.3% of all home mortgages were in some stage of delinquency, anywhere from 30 days past due to, to foreclosure. That is the highest overall delinquency rate since August 2014, 
we shouldn't huge spike in current to 30 day transition rates. They tr they've transitioned into being late for the first time. And what have we seen in the last month? Well, that's pulled back a bit as well. You can see that line in front of you. So where, where early expectations, and this is where that 6% decline number came from, from CoreLogic, they saw, they saw those 30 day transition rates just spike in, in March and April and May. And then all of a sudden in June, they've dropped off considerably, which means we are not seeing as, as, as high of a transition rate into delinquency as we were. The May 2020 um, overall delinquency rate jumped 1.2% uh, from the prior month. So that was a major jump up as you, as you saw. Now, um, let's, let's break down what stages of delinquency we see our, our mortgages in the country being in. Um, the share of mortgages that were 30 to 59 days past due, right? That's early stage delinquency was 3% in May up from 1.7% in, in May 2019. Pretty big jump, right? From 1.7% of all mortgages in the country being 30 days to 59, past, 59 days past due to 3%. Pretty major jump, guys. We should know that. That's the beginning of someone missing a payment. Now, the next stage is, is from 60 days to 89 days. And that increased as well in May it increased to 2.8%, up from 0.6% in May 2019, 0.7% in April uh, 2020. So a major jump in the people that missed the first month, missing the second month. Good for us to know, right? Because that can absolutely affect real estate values or see more delinquency or future foreclosures. That's what we keep on asking ourselves. Gosh, are we going to see an REO market again? Are we going to see a foreclosure market again? So we've definitely see some, some major growth in that 60 to 89 days past due. However, the serious delinquency rate, which is defined as 90 days or more past due, and keep in mind, March, April, May, June, that would have already shown up in these numbers, right, post-COVID. Um, the serious delinquency rate was 1.5% in May 2020, up from 1.3% of all mortgages in May 2019. So not a major jump in, in major delinquency, right? 90 delinquency being 90 days or, or greater past due. In fact, the foreclosure inventory rate, the share of mortgages in some, some stage of foreclosure was 0.3% in May 2020, actually down from a year ago um, from 0.4%. So again, as we're looking or, or answering questions from buyers, well, gosh, do you think we're going to see some uh, a major increase in foreclosures, especially our first time buyers are, are thinking, well, maybe I'll just wait this one out. I don't want to compete. I'm sure there's going to be some foreclosures showing up. Interestingly enough, from a year ago today, we're down. The percentage of foreclosures in the country are down. Now, delinquency up in, in 30 to or 30 to 59 days, up from 59 to, to, to um, 80. 59 to, yeah, 30 to 59 days, 60 to 89 days, and then 90 and more, it's actually um, the, uh, slightly up, foreclosure rate slightly down. Last thing I want to share, and then we're going we're gonna to jump in, um, here's the, the cities with the highest number of delinquencies. And it's interesting, right? Because as I look at Miami, New York, Las Vegas, Houston, Chicago, um, we have we have teens in every one of those cities right now and we're definitely feeling it different than the city right than the state of oregon so the only thing that jumped out at me as i looked at this number is this looks somewhat familiar doesn't it and and portland sort of followed a year and a half later the last time we saw such delinquency rates so when when you see some cities major cities getting up upwards of double digit delinquency rate, um, there's definitely going to be some issues there in those cities. And then the, 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 the real conversation is watching that, making sure that, that we begin to see these numbers come down instead of go up, right, in Boston and Denver and San Francisco, um, 
interestingly enough, uh, the 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 cities that are that are more towards the Pacific Northwest right now tend to be, if you look them up, on the lowest percentage of mortgage at least 30 days past due in all metropolitan areas. So if you pull up Boise and Seattle and, and, and Portland, um, we tend to be on the lower end of all those delinquency rates. So um, good numbers to, to keep in mind as we, uh, as we continue to have some conversations about value. All right, guys, just want to bring your, your attention to just a few dates. If you want to write these down or screenshot them, we will uh, we'll make sure they get sent out in the follow-up email as well. But we're just uh, a couple weeks away from um, uh, a conversation that I'm excited to uh, bring to our network. Uh, we're going to have uh, our master series with not one, but two phenomenal agents. So it'll be a, it'll, it'll be a fast-paced and, and fun um, Wednesday. Is it a Wednesday? Well, August 26th. It'll be a fast paced and fun August 26th from 9 to 10 a.m. Please uh, mark your calendar. We're going to have Peter Shabri and Lance Loken, um, two of the top agents in the country, um, coming in. And we're going to talk about one thing and one thing only uh, the thing we all need more of listings listing. So please make sure you mark your calendar and, uh, and set aside some time to spend with us. And then um, if you're marking your calendar in advance, we're going to have uh, another session on September 23rd. October 28th, November 18th, and December 16th. Those are the, the remaining dates for our master series here at our network. Leslie, anything else on that before I keep on, keep on running? Um, no, just uh, note that our November and December dates have adjusted a little from our usual time to account for holidays. That's why we wanted to get that, those dates out early to you so you can mark those in your calendar. Um, stay tuned. We'll be releasing our speakers for those events um, in the next couple of weeks. So really excited about the lineup coming up. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, so we're going we're gonna to talk um, to a few of our agents. Um, before we do, I want to I want to um, share that um, right now, all of us need to be looking for um, and understanding how to articulate our value proposition in the industry. I think it's one of the greatest um, skills that we can develop right now in any industry, but especially ours. And here's why, because the consumer itself um, the buyer, the seller, the investor, uh, there's a lot of noise in the real estate industry. Um, and there's a lot of competition in the real estate industry. So everything that we can do to begin to separate ourselves and clearly define our value is critically important. Um, I was listening to an interview actually just this morning uh, and it was specific um, to uh, a woman, Nicole uh, Walters. And um, she is a, a uh, just a phenomenally powerful woman. She runs a consulting company out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the entire board and leadership team um, is run by, she's a, a, a black woman. Um, everybody on her board is a minority or a woman. Um, but, but one of the greatest business consultants that I've listened to, incredible energy. Um, but what she said uh, just this morning was, uh, until you understand what your value proposition is, believe in your value proposition, and communicate your value proposition, you will always have a difficult time um, building your business. And, and what I'll share with you is today we're going to talk to a few agents that understand their value, value proposition poten potentially better than anybody and, and look for ways to add to their value proposition in conversation. So one of those value propositions truly is um, unique to our company, and, and that's Keller Mortgage. Um, as you'll see on your screen, uh, we as a network um, have closed 573 loans with our clients. That might be buyers, that might be past clients that are refinancing, but 573 loans through Keller Mortgage. And that has led to a total client savings of almost $3 million dollars. What does that mean? That means people that were going to buy a home and 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 pay for a mortgage or people that that actually got um, advised to refinance, and that's a very uh, a very attractive conversation to have with our our databases, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. They did what they were going to do or should have done based on our agents in our network advising them to do that. But in so doing, in, in so doing, getting on the path of home ownership, right, and wealth building, 
or reducing their, their monthly outlay by refinancing, you were able to save them almost $3 million collectively. Um, and that's impressive. And it's, it's also a value proposition that we need to understand how to, how to talk through. Uh, we're going to send out some, some marketing material after the call as well on what can we use, whether it's socially, whether it's with our database, whether it's, um, whether it's in, in consultations, to make sure that we're up to speed. But before we did that, I wanted to invite on the call um, someone in our network that is probably doing it as well, if not the best of anybody. Um, Noah, are you on the call? I am. Awesome. Awesome. Now we can see you. Thank you, Noah. Uh, good morning. Now, Noah is going to have a serious conversation um, today. Uh, well, we're going to... Sure about that. We're, we're going to see if he does, um, because it's because it's a serious. Uh, you're you're doing some serious business and saving your clients some serious money. Just uh, just real quick, um, you run an impressive business. You uh, and and your wife Heather, um, out of the Sunset Corridor office, um, already year to date, you've closed about fifty deals, um, over twenty million in in real estate volume year to date. Um, on on the path to to potentially your biggest and best year you've ever had in an interesting market. And, um, and I love that because, because you continue to show up and prove that it's not the market, it's, it's what we do with it. So more interestingly, Noah, um, you, have, you have sent 44 applications through Keller Mortgage. Um, you've had 22 closings through Keller Mortgage and you have, clo you have saved your, just your clients alone um, just over about $115,000. So first, here's what I'd love to do with our conversation is I'd love to divide it into how are you doing that with your buyers? How are you doing that with your sellers? How are you doing that with your database? And I also know that you personally have used Keller Mortgage as well. So yeah. what does that look like? One, why do you believe in it? And two, how are, how are your buyers using it? Um, I mean, obviously it, it's, it's just a great program to offer our clients. I mean, one, it's, we know it saves on average about forty-three dollars to $4,700 is kind of what we've been looking at uh, with our clients. So in a simple way to translate to everyone, we talk about that that's basically $4,300 to $5,000 worth of street tacos that they can save up and buy later on. So when you calculate it that way, a lot of people really kind of jump on board with it. Um, uh, I told you I kind of keep it serious. And, um, and uh, Noah, I would argue actually your, your team is averaging about 5200 tacos per. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, when we sit down with all of our clients, our, our value proposition to them is just talking about saving the money, giving the best deal for a home. We always talk about, look, you're out shopping for a home. You're looking for the best deal in a home. Why not shop for lenders? You, you may have come to us with um, Bank of America or Wells Fargo or um, your brother's uncle's cousin who's in the mortgage industry. Why not compare apples to apples? Why not sit down and talk to our guy? Why not talk to Carl? You know, it, would you be interested in saving almost $5,200 on your home loan, keeping that in your pocket, you know, getting another thousand dollars towards closing costs, saving some of that money, maybe giving you the confidence to raise your offer a little bit higher in a multiple offer situation, you know, knowing that you are saving a little bit more on the back end, kind of spending a little bit more in a multiple offer situation. So that's one way we kind of pitch it to our clients. I love that. So is that coming up in your buyer consultation? I, I know obviously it's not just you, it's your team members that are using and closing loans through Keller Mortgage. What does that look like in the consultation? Is it actually showing them that number? Uh, yeah, it actually is. And honestly, we, I mean, as simple as it is, we print out the flyer and we bring it to the buyer consultation. So we have that, it's part of our buyer packet and it's something that we dive into heavily. It's we like to talk to people in terms of if they're using their own age, their lender, it's great, but we have a trusted person that we work with. We sent, you know, over 44 buyers to 22 of clothes, and we have been able to save people upwards of $115,000. And that alone kind of piques people's interest right away. Yeah. And interestingly enough, no, for those that have not used it and don't have 22 closings and 44 applications and $115,000 in savings, it's why we share our network or, or company or brokerage or office numbers as well. So if we're new or we're getting started or we haven't put that into our, our consultation yet, we can, we can use those collective group numbers and say we've been able to share or save our, our KW buyers, right? Almost 
you know, over $2.8 million in loan fees, which, which interestingly enough, stays in the equity of their home. Because if yeah. we're spending money on the mortgage, it's equity, right, in the purchase that isn't there. Or to your point, it allows them even recircling back to that conversation as they're writing the offer. Hey, I know your comfort level isn't, right, it, it isn't $3,000 above list or $5,000 above list. But if we take a step back and, and we go down the route of the KW mortgage, your actual outlay for this home is the same and you're actually giving that $5,000 as a gift to the seller. Yeah, absolutely. So actually let's talk about the seller because you've been able to actually procure listings and use that in your listing presentation as well. What, what do you share with the seller? How does that benefit the seller from your perspective? Um, we use it basically to let people know that we're the only uh, real estate company in the area that does have a mortgage company available to us. If in a multiple offer situation, or if we only have one offer and someone is asking for closing costs and our sellers are hesitant to pay closing costs, we let them know, say, hey, we can utilize Keller Mortgage to help that buyer save on average up to $5,200. So we may not be able to give them the closing costs on the back end or they won't have to pay it out of their pocket. But if the other agent is open to it, which has always been the hard part is because using a Keller mortgage, you know, using a Keller Williams agent's mortgage company has kind of always been the pushback that we've gotten, but we do have that opportunity. We have used it a couple different times where we've got a, a buyer of another co-op to switch over to K-Dub and they actually had nothing but good things to say. Their, their uh, buyer was ecstatic that they actually saved that money, got the thousand dollars towards closing costs and then the additional savings that they got on their loan itself. Yeah. And honestly, no, it's a great conversation to have as a value. You know, we, we've continued here to talk about how important it is to develop great relationships with our co-ops, having open communication with the co-op, and even allowing those co-ops to have a, a if, if they are willing to, to have that conversation with their buyer, it could give their buyer a competitive advantage um, because that buyer can now spend more, pay more for that listing, which means you're working for your seller at the same time. Absolutely. So your, your wife chatted in that the buyer of a KW listing can also take advantage of that program. So it's either our buyers or the buyers on any one of our listings. And, and the reason why we do that is because we believe that uh, money saved in a mortgage is money that potentially goes to the purchase of a home, which actually increases the sales price or the value of that home by this, by this offering. Absolutely. How about your database? Um, you guys do a lot of business out of your database. Um, how have you used KW Mortgage within your database and, and messaging? I mean, the moment interest rates started dropping, it was just an easy call. It's just an easy, easy touch, easy reason to kind of pick up the phone and call everyone. Even if they've closed in the last four or five months, it's just an opportunity to call them and just say, look, you know, we saw, I saw somewhere the other day, someone locked in at a 1.99 30 year fix. So it's just ridiculous. I mean, at that point in time, they are just begging you to refinance. I mean, they're almost giving away money. So it's a conversation that we've had with all of our clients that we've helped buy and sell homes. It's like, Hey, now's a great opportunity. You have a ton of equity in your home. You know, have you thought about taking advantage of what's going on with the interest rates and refinancing? And sometimes we get the call. And sometimes when we make that call, it's like, well, you know, we're actually not looking to refinance. We're actually looking to move out. So that conversation from coming from contribution of saving the money may end up turning into a listing appointment. So it's just such an easy call to have and to make. And if you're not doing it, I mean, you, you get on the horn, you know, get off this call and start calling your database and say, hey, now's a great time to refinance. And it typically could very well lead to a listing appointment that you weren't expecting. Uh, I'll, I'll share, Noah, I think the point that you just made there is, is should be the, the, the messaging over the next two weeks. This week, it's a great message to send out via email to every one of our, our, our the people, right? Every past buyer in our database should get that message via email and then a follow-up phone call. Um, we just did that. Uh, it was me personally. I called a friend of mine that we, we sold a house to and I just said, gosh, I know you just bought this house eight months ago and I normally wouldn't be calling you to refinance. However, we have a program such that you won't pay to refinance and your payment will go down. Yeah. Like I, I have to call you about this, right? And, and what that turned into is, hey, 
don't take this personally, which, which let me unpackage that in a minute. He goes, don't take this personally, but we don't like our house. And we actually want to move to Vancouver. We bought in Portland. Now we want to move to Vancouver. Now, sometimes people are embarrassed about that. And, and if I hadn't called, they very well could have called someone else to sell it because they don't want to call you who just like, it's that social awkwardness. Yeah. And I said, Hey, that's no problem at all. So we're going to wind up listing that house. It was a refinance call listing that house and then actually helping them buy something in Vancouver. So again, when we show up and are providing value and, and, and again, and that's because we have this quiver in our, in our toolbox. Well, I guess quivers don't go in toolboxes, but whatever. We, we have this, we have this value. You looked at that value proposition and say, gosh, this is a value the company that I've chosen to partner with is offering. If I don't offer it, well, that's on me. That's me not taking advantage of this piece of value. And I would argue that it's actually a, a disservice to our, our customers and our clients. So reaching out to the database is a huge, huge win. Yeah. And it's easy for me to have that conversation because not only did we refire refinance our personal house heather and i's goal is to buy an investment property a year kind of it's part of our wealth building process and over the last two years we bought uh, our first investment property we use keller mortgage i think we saved about forty seven hundred dollars on that uh, and then we bought our investment property over in central oregon that we're always over at and enjoying uh, and now opening up to share with other people and our family and stuff like that but we use keller mortgage for that as well so I can speak to the experience that, you know, I've used it. It's not just a, a tool I'm hoping to use that our, our company's pushing on you. This is something that we've actually used multiple times. And in fact, Heather and I are looking at refinancing our house again and refinancing one of the investment properties. So it's something that I can speak to with confidence and knowing that it is something that I use and I, I will stand behind with my clients. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll share, no, I'm with you. Uh, as we speak, I'm going through a, a refi in the house that I'm sitting at right now um, while I'm on this, while I'm on this call. So uh, you guys have done an incredible job and, 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 and more than using it to grow your business. Um, the very cool thing is, is you and Heather come from this place of if we can help our clients with this, why wouldn't we? Yeah. And interestingly enough, as you've done that, um, it's grown your business, right? It's come back and, and rewarded you for, for, for your, your clients saying, Hey, thanks for, for, thanks for the value. So I think that's a real win. Absolutely. Awesome. So takeaways guys um, from Noah is you use it in your buyer consultation. You use it in your listing presentation. You use it in your database and you use it personally, right? All four areas of your, your business and your wealth building, um, you've then saved, gosh, already probably eight, $9,000 on personal transactions. If you re refinance, you'll save probably another $3,000, which, which interestingly enough, guys, that's, that's a down payment for your next investment property, technically. So nice. Work. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for being willing to hop on and, and share. No, I appreciate it greatly. All right. Thanks, Chris. All right. We're going we're gonna to switch gears um, and we're going to talk about um, another value. Uh, ad from from you know that that we need to make sure and ask ourselves hey are we are we taking advantage of of it and that is our new um, and actually let me share with you who's doing this so well uh, Danielle are are you uh, are you on the call I'm here Chris thank you awesome so we're going to talk to to two of our agents first we're going to talk to Danielle and then we're going to talk to Michael Danielle is out of our Southern Oregon office and Michael is out of our Capital City office in Salem. Uh, both of you have done um, just an incredible job at uh, actually using some features in command. Some of us are fast to adopt and some of us are slow to adopt. Um, I'll be the first person to say that change is not easy for me to jump into and adopt. Danielle, you've been doing an incredible job with that. You're, you're an ALC member down there in, in Southern Oregon for us. You're our tech ambassador, uh, which doesn't mean it's easy for you. It just means you are willing to jump in and learn it and use it. Um, you are a solo agent down there doing an incredible business over 5 million year to date in closed production, 18 units. You have five pending. And one thing that you've been just winning at um, is using Facebook ads in your business. So talk us through um, how long have been doing it? What are some of the results? Um, I'm actually going to, while you talk, share a couple of your um, ads that you've posted, and maybe you can share some of the results you've received from those. 
Great, thank you. So started using them. I was in beta testing and so I really wanted to get involved and was super excited about these ads. Um, you'll see uh, playing off what Noah was saying, Keller Mortgage. I love running Keller Mortgage ads um, through command. They're super easy. We have all of the we have all of the flyers and all the social media um, in command in designs that we're able to go ahead and do these quick little marketing and and get it going for us. So I love Keller Mortgage. I'm a huge supporter of it. Um, I have a lot of my clients doing refis. I'm getting buyers off of these um, off these ads I am doing and they are loving it. Awesome. So here's, here's what's so interesting. You've taken a value proposition that we have and you say, hey, instead of just using it with my current clients or my database, you are now taking that value and saying, now let me use it for future clients, right? Top of funnel clients and adding to the, 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 the client list that you have. Right. So I'm always wanting to pull in leads, especially right now. Um, I normally would be getting a lot of my leads from open houses and those have been a little uh, less visited and a little trickier. So I definitely am trying to be creative and pull in buyers. And when they're seeing these um, Keller mortgage, I just go ahead and do a quick snippet about how we have the $1,000 um, contribution and um, and I do an action, I do the action button there. So when they are actually clicking on that action button, it's taking them directly to Keller Mortgage um, to go ahead and get started with someone there. And that feeds directly to command to our database. So I'm actually have those people in there and it's lead capturing them that way. Um, and then I'm having contact. Um, so it's really, really, really effective. So I'm going to share just some of your results in just a second. And uh, now the next question that people are going to say is, um, well, gosh, you know how to do that, but I don't. And the answer to that, guys, is um, every single Friday at two o'clock, our agent services division has what we call study hall. And not to, not to give us flashbacks to high school, but, but that study hall session is there for people to show up and ask questions on how do we, how do we do right? Things like posting these ads, building these ads, going to designs and grabbing these ads, and then, and then actually integrating with Facebook. Those study halls are, are there. So at any point in time on Friday at two o'clock, or reaching out personally to them and setting up a one-on-one, -on -one, which is fine too. But Friday at two is a great time to go and say, hey, can you help me set up one of these ads or run one of these ads? We'll also have a, a, a whole class around, um, command and Facebook on the calendar in September. So look for that. Can you share with us maybe some of the results you've had? By the way, uh, you know, on the, on just the KW mortgage side of things, um, you've also had some success. You've, you've sent nine applications into KW mortgage. You've had five closings from those nine. You've saved your clients almost $25,000 already, but what about some of your ads? What have they turned into? And what is maybe the cost that would be helpful for some of us? Yeah, I was seeing that people were asking about the cost. I generally spend, I'll usually do $25 and I will run it for about five days. So I am, um, depending on what ad, I run several ads. If we're talking about Keller Mortgage only, um, they're a little lower producing sometimes just depending on the time they're ran. Um, but I am looking at about $2 a lead right now for those. Um, if I, and then, Along with that, um, I know you were talking about how we can learn how to do those ads. We also have a couple of really great standouts with Keller Williams. We have Marty Miller and Nick Baldwin, who have a really high level. They have uh, YouTube videos. Go ahead and Google those or go ahead and go to YouTube and Google them. They're quick. I mean, two minutes to five minutes and you can get these ads going. Um, they'll show you how to link them up. But plus we have agent services and then um, tech ambassadors at each of our offices can help with those. Um, but I'm seeing just a, a, around a couple of dollars a lead for a uh, Keller mortgage. Now when I'm running, uh, also if you see the other um, ad I have there, that one had uh, 27,000 hits on it. I ended up with engagements of almost 13,000 people. 
Um, that one I went ahead and ran, uh, letting them know that that one was back on the market. It helps to have a super hot property if you're running a listing um, or if you have a really great listing, go ahead. And I kind of do this strategically. I'll go ahead and get my listing on Thursday um, afternoon. And at that same time, I'll go ahead and get a um, command through command, I'll go ahead and get one of these ads going. Um, and of course, when the house looks pretty and it has some really good aspects to it, you are going to get more engagement. But this one just had the biggest amount of reach I've ever seen for me personally. And with that one, I ended up getting a couple of listings. We ended up with several buyers, lots and lots and lots of interest. So this ad, I also once again ran $25. And that one ended up at about, from actual leads, I ended up around 75 to 80 cents on actual leads that I met in person and are working with currently. So here's the, here's the win for our market, Danielle, and you've captured that. You're in a market that has um, close to no inventory, truly, right? The inventory is so tight and yet you had a house. So even if you had one listing and ran this ad, um, I think the actual numbers that you shared once you once you spreadsheet it out, you're dead on. It was 80 cents per lead that you spent. A total investment of $24, 80 cents per lead, four active buyers, you took a listing, you had 12,500 engagements and 27,000 people reached on that Facebook post. Um, you'll see, and, and that's a screenshot, right? 71 shares, 97 comments. So when you take a step back and you look at that, um, the, 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 the power of, of social engagement on the listings right now is, is one of the best things we could possibly do for our business. Use the market to your advantage. It's a huge, huge win. Right. And for those people that I have like this, for this house in particular, uh, my client had a brand new baby, so she was not comfortable with an open house, where normally I would really like to set up um, in these ads to go ahead and do an open house when they're with it, but she wasn't. So for me, I really wanted to be able to get some business from it still, and that was the best way is to run an ad right now in, in what, you know, what we're seeing right now with COVID and stuff. People are a little more reluctant. They're really doing more private showings than anything, um, so that is where I was able to still pull business. Awesome. Awesome, Danielle. I appreciate you being willing to share. Um, one, sharing a couple of your ads that you ran, but um, also jumping in and sort of being a leader of, a, of adopting some of our technology. And interestingly enough, it's changing your business, truly, right? You're, you're seeing those results show up. So such a win, such a win. Absolutely. And hey, guys, use emojis. I don't really have any of these, but you know, use little emojis, make them cute, cute pictures. Those really draw in the crowd. Um, and they're really going to give you some more engagement. These ones don't represent that. But on some of my other ones, I do. So make sure you're using those and short and short is usually better and sweet. And uh, that'll really help you get more, um, more engagement on your posts. Awesome. And again, guys, if, if you need some help, uh, show up Friday, right? Friday at two for agent services division that'll, that'll jump in and, and answer any questions or show you how to do them and, and actually have some examples of, of some um, posts that are, that are winning and, and working at a high level. So Danielle, thank you so much for, for spending some time with us. Thank you. We're going to, we're going to transition and talk to, to Michael. Michael, are you on the call? Yes, I am. There you are. Good to see your face and uh, spend a little bit of time with you. Michael, um, you have sure. been, uh, you've been all in um, as well in, in using some of the uh, command features with Facebook. Um, you've, you've closed 36 units um, already this year. You have 11 pending. Um, you launched uh, a, a new uh, team on your own just about 12 yes. weeks ago um, with a few agents. And, and in that time, as you focused on, well, what am I going to do to provide value to my team and, and you as an agent, um, you've, you've really dove in and focused on command and, and Facebook ads. You've generated 700 leads in the last 12 weeks um, to then be able to cultivate and drip on and, and follow up with. And uh, you know, you're, you're averaging right now about 84 cents a lead. You've gone as low as 28 cents per lead on some ads. Uh, what can you share with us? Like what is your, what's your 
um, perspective on it? What kind of ads are you doing? Um, what are you trying to focus on as you actually grow and ramp up your business and actually use sure. these for the growth of even? <coughs> um, so yeah, we're focused right now on listings. These ones you see in front of you are for buyers. Um, we really just wanted to be in the marketplace. We wanted to uh, try to capture people that, you know, maybe some agents out there don't have a listing and you need to find a way to bring buyers in without a listing. So the ad, um, actually, I don't think I have, oh, I do, the one on the left-hand side there, it's just a list that I pulled off the landing page. I created a landing page. Uh, it has a list of the properties that match that criteria, and I sent it out. So it's, we're, we're seeing good numbers. I have one running right now. It's at 14 cents a lead. I think we got like 31 leads that have come in already from that. Um, but really, it's, they're, they're actually pretty high turn. They're, they're, they're wanting to have conversations. They're, they're good. Um, I don't seem to have any issues with getting them to the team and having them be able to cultivate and turn into um, actual escrows. We currently have four that are in escrow, two that are turning into sellers, seven that are per, uh, being pre-approved and looking, and an additional six that are getting credit repairs currently. So, and that's, that's only in just the past few weeks. Um, like you mentioned, I, I, I started my own team. We went from having three agents to 11. Um, and now we're trying to keep up with the growth of the team. Um, <clears throat> and right now my, my spend's about $3 a day per ad. So I'm not out there spending, you know, 60, $70 a day to bring in this sort of, um, these numbers. You, you can go more, but I'm not seeing a real return. So yeah. if you go, if you go at $10 a day, I'm seeing the same there as I'm at $3 a day. You know, one of the, one of the things I'll share, Michael, is um, I was having this conversation with another agent this week and, and uh, a lot of times we, we, we get this sense or we hear agents say, well, gosh, um, Zillow leads are better lead, right? Or, or this type of lead is better as a better lead. The only reason why they are better, and I'm going to use that word lightly, um, but I would almost say you're right. And here's why, because they are beating you at follow-up. Mm -hmm. The only, the only thing that that company does that you don't, right. Or we don't is follow up. See that Zillow lead was a, was a PPC lead, right? A pay-per-click lead, maybe a year and a half ago, 18 months ago, 12 months ago, nine months ago, six months ago. And their system is such that it follows up brilliantly. Now, the cool thing about all these ads is they flow right into a database that is set up to follow up with them consistently and, and actually on, on a platform that looks really, really good as they search. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the strategy of that landing page, if you will, sure. because that's, that's unique that you're doing. No, that. I, look at, I look at what is the market telling us what is in high demand? Um, I look at what conversations are we having with our database, with our follow-up, with our, with our clientele, and what are they after? And right now, there's, there's a scarcity, obviously, of, of properties, but we want to find the, the three twos, the 1,500 square feet, the starter homes, because that seems to be the, the most talked about property out there. I think the other one that's as comparable would be an acreage property um, that's somewhere close to town. So if you can find, if you can, if you can capture those two types of buyers, which are the most out there right now, create a landing page directly around those types of properties through your KW landing page, sync it up to every time they click on learn more, you capture all their information and they send right over to that list. They can see those hundred properties. They can see those 70 properties. They feel happy. They're, they're able to search, but now you go to work. Now you need to call them, you need to contact them, you need to have that coming from contribution. We need to, we need to find a real value proposition to offer them, whether that's Keller Mortgage or, or be in their eyes and ears out there in this COVID situation where we're out doing FaceTime videos. Um, but we have to be able to have those conversations, be consistent with it, and then follow up consistently. That's, we all hear the fortunes in the follow-up and we always get this new lead that comes in. We think that's the most important thing to us right then and there. I would, I would argue it's not. I would argue that the most important thing is the one that you haven't called in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, I would argue the people that you haven't been in front of mind, those are the most important. Um, and, and then just being consistent with it and staying in front of mind. Um, but as far as the ads, you know, I do lots of emojis. I, I try to make it kind of short, sweet, to the point. Um, 
they're they're nice pictures they're of our listings so you know if anybody wants to have additional information from me on how I'm getting you know on average 47 cents a lead and on average $1.98 per seller lead call me I'm happy to share ideas tips tricks how I do it no problem awesome I love it you know it's interesting you know when when you say gosh you know you're not spending ten dollars a day you're spending three five dollars a day um, when you think about that you could you could run an entire year a consistent campaign of people dropping into your platform for seventeen hundred and eighty dollars a year, right? So many, many have that budget for for two weeks of Zillow spend, or right, four weeks of Zillow spend. But you'll have that consistency of building your business for the future, and that's why you're growing like yes. you are. So, yeah, and, and I think with uh, with all the outside noise as far as lead generation sources, you know, your bold leads and all these things, this is a proven method. It, it's right in front of you. It's easy to use. Do it. It's really not that difficult. And if you have a hard time getting the pages set up or the verbiage or how does it flow, you have people around you who will help. You're in the right place to make it work. Um, so with us, you know, I want to stay consistently around $1,000 a, a month um, for Facebook leads. Um, I want to run generally between six to seven leads a day or sorry, ads a day. Um, and I want to look at the external sources as bulk or fill. Um, and these ones, because we have such good, good rates of being able to turn them from conversation to build relationships to um, maybe we have to wait and do credit repair. That's fine. That's fine. But when the time's ready, we're here for you. And, and if you can build a pipeline of 2000 individuals over a year that want to buy in 12 months, what does your business look like next year? Yep. Yep. And the only way you can is is by making sure that second system and and, and we're going to talk about that next time but that second system is is built and designed and 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 solid enough that follow up right leads at the top of the funnel yep. aren't worth anything unless there is a funnel and that funnel is that consistent automated um right uh, tech in enabled yes. follow-up we need seven contacts usually before we get a, an appointment. That's what we're kind of seeing right now. And, and that's, I think maybe due to COVID because prior it was about three to four, um, but we're having to have longer conversations and dig deeper and, and find out the real why, what's their motivating factor um, and how can we get them in the door? So once we're able to do that, we're, we're set and we're ready to go. Awesome, love it. Michael, I appreciate it. Thanks for Thank sharing. You. Thanks for being willing to share with others as well as you learn. Um, and again, uh, if, if you heard something, right? Oh gosh, landing page. I don't know how to do that. Friday at two, come to study hall, right? We have these tools available um, and they're very, very simple tools. Like if I can do them, anyone can do them, I promise. Um, they're simple to set up. They're simple to run. It's just learning it the first time. And what we've done is built this rhythm where anything we want to learn every week, there's an opportunity, whether you need one-on-one -on -one or you want to come to that group study hall um, and ask questions and, and see how it's done. Please do that as a, as a network, as a group. And if I could say one last thing, um, yeah. just my team, as everybody in KW, we want to come from contribution. We want to be here to help every agent that comes to the door. It doesn't matter if you're a big time agent or your first day on the job you can call us. If you have questions, you, you need help running down how to do it. Um, we can meet someplace and I can help you set it up. So don't be afraid to contact or reach out. There's no stupid questions. Call. Awesome. Love it. We'll make sure that um, all three of your uh, contact information is in our, our email that we go out as a follow-up as well. Uh, guys, thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Noah. Um, thank you, Michael, for um, showing how to take the value that we have and be able to use that to grow our business. It's the only reason why um, we went out and as an organization um, launched KW Mortgage, right? It's the only reason why um, they worked literally for, for years to develop that relationship between command and work with Google and work with Facebook to, to get that integration. Um, it's for the growth of our business. Now it's up to us to plug in and, and when we have to, we can't do that for you. Um, but understanding how it works and actually seeing a range of agents, right? Newer, middle, you know, uh, you know, two, three years in the business or, or a decade in the business, all different types of agents um, winning with those tools. All right. 
All right, guys, um, we're going to wrap up here on that note. Uh, remember, in a couple weeks, we're going to be back here. Um, don't miss uh, don't miss our master series with uh, Peter and Lance. It'll be a it'll be a 100% uh, session focused on what those two are doing right now to win taking listings. And, and there's very few as good at that than, than those two. All right, let's make it a great day. Thanks for being part of it.